Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hockey Talkie. My name is Clay. Thank you for tuning in. This is the first in a series of videos I'm going to do uh, diving into uh, different aspects of this upcoming qualifying round matchup between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Edmonton Oilers. Each video is going to be kind of focused on one specific area and this video is going to be focused just in general on what we can expect the rosters to look like uh, for both of these teams. So just like any other year, rosters are expanded for the playoffs, which means both teams will be bringing in younger guys, guys from their minor league affiliates, into training camp to practice and potentially play during this whole pandemic playoff tournament thing. Uh, but I don't really expect those younger players uh, to really affect the lineups of either team, especially in this opening series, unless there's some sort of injury or just horrendous play, which is totally possible after this long layoff that we had. But to be honest, I, I don't really see the rosters really changing all that much or the lineups changing all that much from what we saw at the end of the shortened regular season. Now, one thing that will affect the lineups is players coming back from injuries, players who would have been lost for the season had the season progressed normally, but because of the postponement, that has given extra time for players to heal up and come back at a time when normally it would be the off season, but now it's when they're gearing up for the playoffs. That's gonna affect the Blackhawks more than the Oilers because the Oilers really weren't dealing with injured players all that much uh, at the end of that shortened regular season. The only real injury that they had to a starter was defenseman Mike Green, who they acquired from Detroit at the trade deadline, but he had only played two games for them before getting injured. Uh, he's the type of guy that's not really going to affect their chances all that much at you know winning this series or winning the Stanley Cup. He's more of a depth guy. He will be in the starting lineup, but I don't think him being healthy really makes or breaks them in this series. I think uh, them winning or losing this series is going to come down to other factors. Now, having Mike Green healthy is still beneficial for the Oilers, especially as the tournament goes on. If they progress how they want to through the tournament, as players get you know battered and bruised as they go on, they're going to need all the depth they can get. And having Green healthy is certainly going to help with that. So the Oilers are going to like having him back, but it's not going to affect him all that much. The Chicago Blackhawks are a different story. When play was halted back in early March, the Blackhawks were dealing with quite a bit of injuries from short-term injuries like day-to-day -day things with uh, Adam Boquist and Drake Kajula. They're both healthy now, so they'll be ready to go. And then you look at longer-term injuries, defenseman Calvin DeHaan, who uh, should have been lost for the rest of the season. He had shoulder surgery back in late December. He wasn't supposed to play the rest of the year, but he's going to be back. He's going to be ready for training camp. That's going to be a boost to the defense. You have guys like Zach Smith out, Andrew Shaw out, Brent Seabrook out. I, I think those players are a lot more questionable in terms of them being ready to play. I would be surprised if those three are going to be ready and in the lineups, but the Blackhawks will be getting back a couple of other players, so that's going to affect their lineups. Uh, they're going to have a lot more depth because of that, depth that they wouldn't have had if they somehow would have made the playoffs in a regular uh, type of scheduled year. And then beyond that, there's still the question on whether or not defensive prospect Ian Mitchell is going to be allowed to play for the Blackhawks. The NHL hasn't really made a decision on whether or not they're going to allow uh, players who sign their ELC during this break to play in the pandemic uh, playoff shindig thing. You think they would allow it because it's basically the same situation as the Colorado Avalanche had last year with Kale McCarr, except that this is happening now in well, the summer rather than the spring. But we don't know the official answer yet. But even if we assume that he is eligible for the playoffs, I still think it's a long shot for him to get in the lineup, especially with Calvin DeHaan coming back from injury, especially because it's a best of five series rather than a best of seven. There's less room for error in the best of five. So you're a little bit more hesitant to put a young guy into the lineup, especially if he hasn't played with the team before during this season. Now, that could all change if Ian Mitchell comes into training camp and just just has an awesome training camp, then they're going to put him in. But if it's, you know, if he's just kind of normal or he doesn't have an exceptional uh, training camp, he doesn't really stand out beyond guys like, say, Lucas Carlson or Nicholas Bodine, then, I mean, he's going to just 
be there for depth essentially, which is still good. But once again, I think it's still a long shot to see him play. Now, overall, looking at these rosters, looking at these lineups, looking at how they perform during the regular season, you got to give the nod to the Edmonton Oilers. There's a reason why they're the fifth seed and the Blackhawks are the 12th seed. But at the same time, the regular season was three months ago. We've had a long break since then, and players really haven't been practicing with each other or really being around each other during that time. So there's that question on whether these teams are going to be able to get back, you know, having the same chemistry, playing the same way, playing how they did during the regular season, or will things be a little bit different? Maybe they'll be a little bit rusty. Maybe the passes won't be as crisp. Maybe the tic-tac-toe plays won't be quite there. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, one thing that these teams can do beyond rosters is game plan more directly for their opponent here. The Blackhawks won two of three games during the regular season against the Oilers, but it's a little harder to game plan against an opponent during the regular season when you're just passing them by in a three-game road trip and they're the back end of a back-to-back than if you would game plan for them for a potential five straight games in a best-of-five series against them. So there's a lot of things beyond just rosters and how those players and rosters play during the regular season that are going to affect how this qualifying round series plays out. And those are the types of things we are going to dive into in future videos. But until then, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you got some sort of enjoyment out of it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate that as always. But most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.